Hey, <laughs> I was going to the wrong stage. Um, so I'm Ken Levine, I'm the creative director of Irrational Games, and um, you know, we've been doing a lot of press for, for Bioshock Infinite recently, and um, I did an interview um, a few months ago, and I kind of tend to speak my mind in interviews, and in, in this interview, let's just say I expressed some, um, some skepticism about the very concept of motion control. And I may have said a few um, uncharitable things about the PlayStation Move. So, you know, days later, a coworker um, tells me there's somebody who wants to have a, a phone meeting with me about the interview. I'm like, oh, okay, who is it? I said, Sony. And, you know, I was like, oh, great. I, I really want to have this conversation. And, you know, I took the meeting and, um, I expected, you know, a lot of like, like, you know, gnashing of teeth and, and nervousness. And instead what they said is they said, Ken, look, we want to make you a believer. And I was like, look, dude, a rational, you know, we don't do like, you know, that, you know, that's not our thing. You know, we don't do that and we, we don't do that. Um, you know, we, we do this, you know, we do the, the core games, you know, dual shock stuff. And then they said something that struck a chord with me. He said, you know, we're, we're not talking about this and, and that. What we're talking about is removing this barrier of entry that people who love your story and love your worlds, who love the idea of Bioshock, but they just can't get their head around this. What if they could play your game? And what would you wager if you could get those people on board to try your game as well as your, as your core audience without sacrificing anything? And I said, look, I tell you what I won't wager is, is I won't wager these people. And they said, you know, look, you don't have to. So, you know, you know, they sent us a PlayStation Move, and the first thing we noticed is that the damn thing kind of looks like a DualShock. You know, it's got all the cool buttons and everything. And we started playing around with it, and once we got past that initial anxiety that our game would translate well, we started seeing other opportunities, other ways to interact with the world, with, with Elizabeth you know, with the skyline, how you can move around in that space. You know, but I don't have a ton of time for discussing those things. And we're going to talk about that another day and we're just getting rolling. But we're going to have PlayStation move on the Bioshock Infinite, on Bioshock Infinite. And the exciting part is we're just starting to get our head around what that can mean. And before I go, you know, there's this another game we've been thinking about for a long time. It's a bit of a, a pet project of Irrationals and it's set in the Bioshock universe. And this has been kicking around for a few years now. And it's very early days and the design is still evolving. But recently, we, you know, we found the right home for it. And it's on this guy. <laughs> on the NGP. And so this is gonna be interesting too. Um, listen, thanks everyone. And we hope we see a lot of you at the booth to check out Bioshock Infinite. And if not, um, you can check it out online. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you, Ken. Bioshock Infinite looks amazing, and we're all looking forward to playing it on a PS3 with PlayStation Move, as well as delving into the Bioshock universe on NGP. To show further strength to this partnership and an example of publishers taking advantage of the great opportunities with PlayStation, consumers who buy the PS3 version of Bioshock Infinite will also get a copy of the first Bioshock on the same Blu-ray disc. This is an experience only available on PlayStation. Now another partnership that we're proud to announce is with THQ in Saints Row the Third. It will include an exclusive game mode and game content only on the PS3. This exclusive game mode will have players utilizing the unique weapon of Saints Row as you take on Steelport's most colorful enemies. It's a completely over the top experience that Saints Row fans will love and it launches in North America on November 15th. Another title with support on PlayStation Move that will have exclusive content on our network is from Paramount and Bad Robot. It's based on the massively popular Star Trek franchise and timed with the J.J. Abrams Star Trek film next year. It's a co-op action adventure with an original storyline that will capture the authenticity of the Star Trek brand and be fully compatible with PlayStation Move. Paramount will also release a move peripheral cloned after the phaser made famous by Star Trek. There's a couple of Trekkies out there, that's good. 
They realize that PlayStation experience is second to none, so they're also going to offer a playable prequel to the full game in the form of a digital-only title available exclusively on the PlayStation Network. Both of these titles from Paramount will be PlayStation Move enabled and playable in 3D. Let's take a look at some early footage. <laughs> One publishing partner that has excelled at creating amazing PlayStation experiences year after year is Electronic Arts. For the last two decades, EA has maintained a unique relationship with Sony Computer Entertainment and with PlayStation fans all over the world. Today I'm excited to reveal three more exclusive offers EA has coming only on PlayStation 3. To begin with, the epic snowboarding franchise born on the PlayStation will return this year with SSX. And for the PlayStation 3 only, EA has created a death-defying race down Japan's iconic Mount Fuji. This exclusive level features 10 unique drop points and is rendered from a recreation of Mount Fuji taken directly from NASA satellite data, and only PlayStation 3 owners will get to experience it. Next up is Need for Speed The Run. EA's amazing cross-country race that features dozens of incredible vehicles, including eight of the world's hottest supercars. Feedback from gamers who love this franchise confirms that these supercars are what makes Need for Speed so exciting. And with that, PS3 owners are going to get a special Blu-ray disc with seven additional supercars, including the Super Sport, the Hennessy Venom GT, and the Bugatti Veyron, only on PS3. And then finally this fall, EA will be releasing their jaw-dropping shooter, Battlefield 3. The PlayStation 3 version of this blockbuster will be bigger than any other. EA is using the extra storage capacity of Blu-ray to add a second game, Battlefield 1943, to the disc. That gives PlayStation owners one of the most exciting games of the year, bundled free with one of the most popular games offered on the PlayStation Network. That extra and exclusive content is a critical differentiator for PlayStation. Creating a unique experience isn't limited to the PS3. It's also been a signature part of the PlayStation's mobile gaming offering. And of course, Electronic Arts will be supporting our next generation portable as well. Here to talk about that newest member of the PlayStation family is the president and group CEO of Sony Computer Entertainment and president of Sony's Consumer Products and Services Group, Kazuo Hirai. Hey, Jack. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. How about that tie he's wearing? Can you? <laughs> Round of applause for his tie. First time I've seen anybody from Sony Computer Entertainment actually on stage wearing a tie. First time. I'm still not going there, but Jack made the plunge. So anyway, good to see you all again. Uh, six years ago, we came here to E3 and announced a new 10-year vision for home entertainment. And we said that we would build an ecosystem of content and network services that matched our incredible heritage. And the world of network entertainment has undergone a significant change since we launched PlayStation Network. And we can, of course, attest to the importance of having that connected experience across all our products, devices that are connected to content and, of course, connected to each other. 
And we learned a lot during the recent outage of the PlayStation Network. And one of the most important things we learned was about the trust and the loyalty of our consumers. And we have been overwhelmed by the support from our fans who recognize the value of a connected experience. And we thank you for that. We know that the network experience is not only critical for home entertainment, but it's equally important for mobile entertainment as well. And we ushered in a lot of that adoption for portable entertainment back in 2004 when we introduced the original PlayStation Portable. And at the time, cell phones were unable to deliver the deeper, richer gaming experiences. But after six years, these multifunction devices are ready for PlayStation-like experiences. So the question is, how do we deliver a PlayStation-level experience to a wider audience? And the answer is what we're calling PlayStation Suite. PlayStation Suite will make PlayStation content available on something other than PlayStation hardware, starting with PlayStation-certified Android smartphones and tablets. This isn't just the PlayStation install base that will experience our products in a totally new way. It's a whole world that will experience our products through PlayStation Suite. And we will have more information on PlayStation Suite in the very near future, but we're confident that once new customers get a taste of PlayStation content from their certified devices, it's only a matter of time before many of them come knocking on the door of PlayStation 3 and, of course, our next generation portable. And now, as I mentioned, absolutely central to the evolution of the digital living room of content and entertainment following you anywhere and everywhere is the PlayStation Portable. It's been a home console-like gaming experience in the palm of your hands, and we continue to have very high expectations for PSP in the years to come. And with that in mind, we've created our next generation portable to be one that breaks traditional boundaries of entertainment with new ways to control the device, new ways to interact with your world, and new ways to interact with your friends, and of course, with your entertainment. This product introduces elements like a dual touchpad, an OLED screen, and dual cameras that provide an augmented reality experience to allow you to play with every aspect of your real life. And connecting with your everyday life and the world around you is a critical component to the development and to the DNA of this product. So I'm very proud to showcase, for the first time in North America, the successor to the PlayStation Portable. What you've come to know as NGP, our next generation portable, is officially named PlayStation Vita. Thank you. Thank you. So, what does Vita mean? Vita means life, and we're confident that PlayStation Vita will be the first product that truly blurs those lines between entertainment and your real life, empowering you to play, interact, and connect like never before. The features alone are cutting edge. Two analog sticks that give you dual shock-like control of games, a stunning multi-touch five-inch OLED screen, front and rear touchpads, six-axis motion sensing technology, and of course, my favorite feature, front and rear cameras allowing for augmented reality experiences never before seen, completely blurring the lines between reality and interactive entertainment. PlayStation Vita will have both Wi-Fi and 3G Wi-Fi models for on-the-go entertainment. This will allow for everything from social networking to location-based gaming that help you find and meet friends for brand new experiences. Now, of course, having such an impressive set of network features and ambitions requires the nation's fastest mobile broadband network. And we'll be partnering with AT&T as the exclusive carrier for PlayStation Vita in the United States. There we go. go.
Now, customers with an AT&T service plan will also have free access at more than 24,000 AT&T Wi-Fi hotspots nationwide. So, and together, we'll deliver breakthrough entertainment experiences that bring you closer to your entertainment and, of course, closer to others. And more information, including pricing and the carriers for the other territories, will be announced soon. PlayStation Vita offers a truly unique social experience. And there are a few key reasons why we say that. With a feature we're calling Party, users in the same game room on PlayStation Vita can voice chat live over headsets or the built-in microphone no matter where they are or what game they're playing. And it's a perfect way to stay in touch with your friends and chat during gameplay from wherever you might be. Another critical step forward is a social connection tool for PlayStation Vita that we're calling Near. Near allows you to connect and play with others around you, recommend content to them, compare trophies, and a variety of other social connection tools for the PlayStation Network. Both Party and Near will power the connected experience for PlayStation Vita, and we'll be unveiling more specifics on them in the very near future. Social networking and community elements are a critical component for PlayStation Vita. This is the best proof that with PlayStation Vita, our content experiences and network, the world is in play. Now to showcase some of the gaming experiences and new ways to play, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Senior Vice President for Worldwide Studios North America, Scott Rohde. Scott, thank you. Thanks, Kaz. I know I'm speaking for everyone at SCE Worldwide Studios when I say that we've been truly inspired working on PlayStation Vita. We believe this device will change how people think about portable gaming, but you don't have to take our word for it. When you see these demos and play some of the content after the show, you will see firsthand that the advanced technology packed into the PlayStation Vita will deliver gameplay experiences never before seen on any handheld. Sony Bend is no stranger to creating great portable games. Their work on the Siphon Filter and Resistance Retribution franchises on PSP was highly regarded. Today, we're going to show you a brief demo of Uncharted Golden Abyss. So please welcome John Garvin and Chris Reese. Thanks, Scott. When John and I first started working on PlayStation Vita over two years ago and got our first glimpse of what it could do, we became excited by the possibilities it offered for creating an all-new Uncharted experience. So today we'd like to run through a short section of one level to show you why. Temple of Serpents. It's got to be it. How the hell do I get up there? So, as you saw from the Uncharted 3 demo, the bar for production values in an Uncharted game is incredibly high. Everyone knows who Nathan Drake is, how he looks, moves, and sounds. PlayStation Vita had to have the memory and processing power, not just to allow us to get Drake right, but the environments as well. As you can see, PlayStation Vita enables us to use advanced rendering techniques like water shaders and dynamic lighting for casting real-time shadows. But we also knew that gameplay was going to be just as important as the visuals. And the PlayStation Vita allowed us to tailor important aspects of Uncharted gameplay for the new platform. For example, Chris is going to alert this enemy deliberately so we can show off how our touch melee system works. Here, instead of using the square button for combat, the entire screen becomes a virtual button. You can just tap the fist icon, or you can touch the enemy directly to take him out. For traversal, we allow players to use traditional controls or touch. Here you can see that Chris is having Drake climb the wall by just using the sticks and buttons. We wanted to make sure that fans of Uncharted could simply pick up the game and play it using controls they were used to. But in places where it made sense, we've incorporated PlayStation Vita controls. 
So here Chris is using the six axis to tilt in the direction he wants Drake to jump. The great thing is you're not look, go ahead and jump. There you go. The great thing is you're not locked into one set of controls or the other. You can tap, use the buttons and sticks, or combine the two. We kind of have a motto, play the way you want. Here's another example. While dangling from these ruins, Chris can either use the stick to swing or simply drag his finger across and Drake will follow. To get across this chasm, same idea. Chris can have Drake jump action style by running and pressing the X button, or he can tap on the ledge and Drake performs a cinematic leap. So while we definitely allow you to play the game the way you want, while developing the game, we began to discover that there were things you could do with the PlayStation Vita that you just couldn't do on a regular console. Along these walls, Chris is using a technique we call painting edges. You just draw your finger across a series of stones and ledges, highlighting the route you want Drake to climb. You're now guiding Drake in a unique and interesting way. Of course, while tapping edges to climb is fun, tapping an enemy to perform a stealth takedown is more fun. For core combat, we return to the controls that make Uncharted so much fun, starting with two dual analog sticks. We brought over all of Drake's combat controls, snapping and shooting from cover, over the shoulder aiming, blind fire, and so on. All right, let me shut up for a second and let Chris play through this. where it makes sense, we use touch controls to enhance the core combat. So for example, to reload, Chris can just tap the weapon icon, or to pick up a new weapon, he can either tap on its icon or the weapon itself. And now he's got a shotgun. Nice job. Okay, that's our demo. To wrap up, our goal wasn't just to create an authentic Uncharted game, but to create an Uncharted game unique to the PlayStation Vita. We have a lot more to show. We have brought two demos with us back in the arcade area, so please stop by and check them both. Uh, we've got a lot of features we didn't have time to show you, like the way we're using rear touch and everything else on the PlayStation Vita, so stop by and check it out. Thank you.